Hey folks, Uniservo here, and today we are going to look at another oddball bit of IBM equipment. This is a 5087 color printer, and yes, it is quite odd. Now, I have to say I have very little information on this, no docs, there are only fleeting references on the net. This thing was sitting on eBay for Quite a long time actually and I was eyeballing it and it was a hundred dollars or, or make offer or whatever and uh, well I just couldn't afford it uh, I kind of have to be a little more careful with my money these days so uh, yeah a friend bought this for me he actually submitted a, a, an offer which was considerably less than a hundred dollars and uh, got it shipped out there out here and uh, well now here it is back on my uh, video shoot table, which I just cleaned off. So uh, let's take a look at this real oddball. Now, what I can tell about this 5087 from the little bits that I've managed to scrounge up online is that this was probably an accessory, a latecomer addition to the 5080 graphic system that IBM marketed in the early mid 1980s this was a sort of high-end cad system mainframe connected generally although i think you could actually uh, connect it to an rt as well now i do have some 5080 documents somewhere that i need to dig them out they're part of the whole document cataloging project but uh, BitSavers has a small amount of manuals. Actually, it's got the, the big manual, the, the principle of operations or whatever. And uh, 1984 edition, and this is not in there. But I see other references that show that 5087 was part of the whole 5080 system. So I can only guess that this is kind of a, a, a late coming addition to the line. Here we have the rear of the unit. We see the power input, standard IEC type cord, and we see a bunch of BNC jacks, as well as some small, looks like four pin modular jacks. It's also some sort of slide switches. Well, it appears that this thing will print a video signal. Now, the problem is I have no idea what kind of video signal it needs. I'm kind of assuming that the small modular uh, jacks, one for, well, I guess four channels here, that probably carries signals to the printer, maybe a serial signal saying, print this video. I don't know. And these little slide switches, I... Gosh, that kind of looks like it's maybe uh, intensity. Other than that, there's uh, no other connections on this. No networking connections, no bisync, no, no 3270, no, no nothing. Just four sets of video connectors. So, well, I'll have to dig up and see what, the, uh, what video standard this actually uses. Let's take a look at the label. Okay, looking at the label in the back, the important bits anyway. Well, you can see this is 25 kilograms, just about. And of note, it says manufactured for IBM Corporation, manufactured in Japan. So this is not an actual IBM design. They, are, they probably had some input into this design, but I wonder who actually made this. It does really look like a Japanese product. Well, maybe we can get inside of it later on and figure it out. Here's the front panel, and it's full of weird cryptic icons. We've got uh, five things here. Well, okay, that, that's pretty self-explanatory. With a green LED, I assume that means if everything is great, you get a green LED. Then you get other things. Looks like a roll of paper. Looks like another roll of paper, but pushed up. Well, that 
kind of looks like a paper jam. And then we've got maybe a camera? I don't know. We've got a couple of symbols here that, uh, well, I don't know what that means. Black to black, white to white, or white to black with a button that controls it. A big C, I don't know, copy, uh, what? I don't know. <laughs> and we have a, a up arrow plus P next to what looks like a seven segment display. Of course, the power switch. All right, well, we have some signs of life here. Big zero, We've got three yellow lights. I'm assuming those are some sort of error lights because, well, OK is not lit, is it? What happens if, if we push that button? I, uh, that just seems to toggle between black to black, white to white, and white to black. Does that mean maybe uh, making the display negative or something like that? Flipping it around? C button doesn't do much. And the up arrow plus P, well, that makes it go to one, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know if this is either very unhappy or it needs something. Maybe it needs a signal through uh, those small modular connections. Maybe it needs to see an actual live video signal that it knows what it is. I really have no idea. Goes up to nine. And always seems to go back to zero after hitting the C button. Clear? Maybe it's clear. I just really don't know. Okay, let's pop it open and see the actual printer guts here. All right, we've got a roll of paper, a uh, thermal head cleaner, and uh, right here behind the yellow is indeed some sort of thermal print head, even says so. And as you can see, we have a roll of plastic, which is divided into various colors. I'm gonna, I see red, I see yellow, I see blue. I don't know if we can uh, sort of advance it a little bit. Yeah, see, this, oh, actually that's, this is probably actually uh, CMYK then. Oh, there, I don't know if there's a black, a black band after that. Um, but yeah, that's how you would get your color. Now, like I said, it does have a thermal head. I'm not entirely certain how this technology works. If it uh, drops some small blob of the colored plastic in succession, of course, onto the paper. I just don't know. It's got this nice uh, sort of toggle locking feature, so it stays open, but you can't really force it closed until you bring it back up. But I just noticed, hey, the OK light now is blinking. No idea why. There also seems to be an internal paper cutter. Let's see if it does it this time. Okay, so it can do a little bit of paper handling. And it's making a different noise. I wonder what it's doing in there. If something is turning, what happens if we open this up? It stops. And I see no difference. It was doing something. Don't know what. And now inside, 
we can see that yes, this clearly is a Japanese product. You can just tell from the look of the circuit boards and even if you just look at all the chips. I did remove one of the boards and let's see if we get it in the there. And yeah, we see big NEC chips. Uh, we see Matsushita as well. And there's the logo right there on the top of the board. So yes, this is a Matsushita product. Matsushita, of course, now officially known as Panasonic. Here is the side of the unit with the mechanicals, the motors and such like that. It looks like there aren't very many motors and just a lot of gears and such. And if you've ever been inside of a 1980s era copy machine or something like that, yes, that's typically how they did it. They, they used only a few motors, but a lot of gears and clutches. Seems to be uh, what they were doing here. Got the card cage in the back, uh, and you can see that nothing is really all that IBM in here. IBM has their look, and the Japanese makers also have their look. Looking at that one card, this might be the brains of the operation, I'm not sure. It's got an 8085, made by NEC. A lot of these uh, chips are NECs or uh, uh, Matsushita. Got some uh, probably RAM up in the corner, those uh, ceramic and gold packages. Uh, uh, yeah, it looks pretty much like a brain. The other circuit board seems to be maybe a little more video uh, oriented. In fact, it, it has the three coax, probably R, G, and B, uh, connecting to the other side, this is kind of a sandwich board type of deal. Um, yeah, it has a large chip in the corner, which I don't know what it is. And yes, it looks like another 8085. So these guys were fans of the 8085. I'm not going to really show you the, the other side because it's mostly in a metal cage box. So I really don't want to get too far into this. This was actually kind of difficult to get out of the machine because of the coax. I had to unplug it and uh, have to make sure I get it back in right, or the colors are going to come out screwed <laughs> screwed up if I mix up the R, G, e, R, G, and B. So yeah, I'll button this up and uh, let's close this out. And there we have a quick look, a teardown, if you will, of an IBM 5087 color printer. Now, what am I gonna do with this? Well, I don't know. I don't have a 5080 of any any bits. Well, actually I do have, a, I think I have the sketch pad for a 5080. I think it's called maybe a 5083 kicking around somewhere. Uh, and hey, now I got a printer, but I don't have any of the rest of the system. I don't think I even have a manual for this. It just doesn't, doesn't ring a bell. I do have some 5080 manuals. Uh, they'll surface eventually. I'm going to continue to clean this thing up. It had some horrible, horrible scuff marks, black scuff marks all over it. And I just threw, oh, solvent after solvent after uh, at it and nothing would work. Nothing would work until I pulled out the big guns. Uh, the petrochemicals goof off finally finally started cutting through the black, but you can see it's still pretty smudgy. I just have to be careful because uh, I'm not sure what's in Goof Off, what the actual petrochemical is, but it's, it's pretty strong stuff and I don't want to melt any of the plastic or destroy any of the paint. So, well, there you have it. If any of you guys have any more information about this, maybe you have one, I don't know. I'd love to hear from you. Put it in the comments. Put it anything. Hey, maybe maybe you were an engineer that used one of these. Maybe you were one of the engineers that designed designed this. Uh, it is kind of interesting when I actually meet some of the guys that designed these old pieces. Get a lot of inside information that way. 
And uh, one big thank you to uh, my friend Richard, who uh, uh, donated to the, the channel here and uh, forced me off my butt to do a video. <laughs> and yes, I, I did, uh, did pick something out vaguely graphics-like for you. Uh, hey, if you like the video, leave a like and yeah, the comment stuff and ring the bell and subscribe and all that stuff. And uh, thank you for uh, my other patrons, uh, Patreon or patrons, that's what they're called. And uh, I do have a Patreon account and it helps a great deal. So I'll leave the link in the description. And also my friend who actually bought this machine for me. I, I owe him something, many beers or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's kind of getting my fix for, for weird IBM stuff. Because that's the stuff I like. Okay, well, I shall see you sometime later. I don't know when. i uh, still trying to get the gears lubricated in this whole thing. So uh, get, get out of the mud. So hopefully some videos coming up shortly. All right. Bye-bye.